before I move further, I also want to like uh, do the surface matching here. Uh, what is surface matching? Well, in Open Studio, when you create these spaces, uh, Open Studio think that all these spaces here, all all the uh, envelopes uh, surfaces, they are outside property. They are outside properties. They have air exposure and sun exposure. Well, uh, uh, then you have to make those corrections manually. Either you can select each and every wall and change the properties in this inspector tool. For example, you can see this particular wall has outside boundary conditions. It has sun exposure, wind exposure. It means that when you run the simulation, they will act as outdoor boundaries. And the, the thermodynamics that will happen through this uh, surface will act as per that. So you want to definitely change the properties. You want to make them either adiabatic walls or the internal walls. Well, Open Studio has provided a new script for you. Like, you know, you can just like click on one uh, option, which is this surface matching options and it will change all the properties for you automatically. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on intersect in entire model and then match in entire model. That's it guys, uh, I'm done with this. And now if I look at the property of this wall, you can see it's been changed. It has no sun exposure, no wind exposure, and is it is next to the another some other uh, interior wall. Okay, so again, like you know, very important feature here. This is one of the script that I was talking about. And after this, I can provide the window wall ratio. So again, there are different ways to do it. Either I can select some particular spaces like this, like you know, by using your uh, laptop. And then go to this open studio user script manual again and then look for this option which is set window to wall ratio if i click on this uh it can allow me to provide the window wall ratio which will let's say like 0.6 how much offset you want from floor maybe like one meter and click ok you can see for those selected spaces i have window wall ratio equal to 60 percent or else i can select complete project like this by using your mouse and then provide the window wall ratio let's say like maybe 0.8 uh yeah okay and you can see everything is like it's a glass box now so again very important feature or you can do it manually like you can just select like one space you can bring more windows if you want like this using your sketchup tools uh and maybe you can provide some skylight as well okay so easy if you want to make some changes in your spaces you can totally do that by using your uh, sketchup tools like extrude this space like this or maybe like do make some more changes in your spaces i can make one more intersection here and maybe most makes most changes like this so easy guys and if i if you want to get crazy here you can totally do, do that like, let me just like you know show some more changes here so that you know the power of this tool Um, that didn't go well, but yeah, something like this. Okay, so again, like you know, the idea is to let you guys know that this tool is very powerful. In eQuest, you can't do like you know changes in your building geometry like this. It is so easy, like you know, we are we are using the SketchUp tools, but the changes are happening in Open Studio uh, Energy model. And before I move further, I can see like some more questions here. Uh, there are so many of them guys I'm sorry like you know I, I can't go through each of them like either Bob will go through them or like you know I'll reply you back through emails later okay so guys like you know again like you know you can get crazy here if you want you can make more changes you can easily create skylight again that's a very important feature guys like you know in in open studio it allows you to create your geometries easily okay all right, so I'm going to work with this geometry now. What I'm going to do is like, you know, I'm going to provide the thermal zones here. Uh, and before I move further, I want to ask a question to you guys. Like, you know, what is the difference between a space or a, and, a, and a thermal zone? Can you please explain me any, just take a shot. If you don't know it, it's fine. Take a shot. Anyone? All right, so I got some um, feedback here. So yes, thermal zone is controlled by thermostat. Okay, that's like, you know, half um, correct. So let me explain you um, 
spaces is something like where you have internal loads or something related to your envelope for example right now these spaces they have like you know um, in envelope properties for example if i'm talking about this particular space it has six uh, surfaces ground roof four walls and it, it can have internal loads something like lighting power density plug load density uh, people's density or occupancy but but it doesn't have thermostat or any HVAC system associated with it in open studio you need to assign a thermal zone to assign a HVAC system and a thermostat to your spaces it's something like what you also have in eQuest if you remember like eQuest interface in one screen you have all these spaces where you provide the property something like lighting power density envelope plug load density and so on while if you move to next screen you have like properties something like associated HVAC systems and so on so the same thing in open studio uh, once you are done with creating your space types and like you know providing the properties uh, to it which we haven't yet you can assign the thermal zones so what I'll do here I'll just like you know go on here let me just show you how many spaces do we have for now we have 14 spaces right now 93 surfaces if you have some kind of OCD like me, uh, like, you know, I always like to, like, you know, rename them properly, something like, hey, first floor, underscore, uh, office, north, something like this. Why I like to do that? For So that later, in case I need to do some kind of quality check, I know in which space I'm working. There's so many things here, guys, like, you know, there are 93 surfaces, 26 subsurfaces. Like, you know, having these kind of generic names won't make your life easier in case you need to do QC later. So please guys, like, you know, when you're working on uh, this tool or even on eQuest or any, any any other energy tool, like, you know, it's a very good practice to rename your important components like the way you want, okay? That's all I like to do, first floor underscore office underscore north. So I know which floor that I'm working on and which space that uh, I'm working on, okay? So now I have like, uh, I don't know, I remember, like I have 14 spaces. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select each and every space in my model and run another script here, which is like add new thermal zones for spaces with no thermal zone. Okay, there's a new script, click on it. Okay, and now if you see, go back to like, you know, inspector tool, you can see 14 thermal zones here. Well, again, you can see they have very generic name. So I like to run another script here which is um, rename thermal zones based on space names. Boom. And what happens now? I mean, now you can see my thermal zones have exact name what I have given for my spaces. Now I know that for this thermal zone, like, you know, where do I need to go for in case I need to ch make some changes in, in internal gain. This thermal zone is connected to first floor office underscore N and that's where I need to go in case I need to make some changes to fix my unmet load hours or anything, okay? So that's the benefit of renaming. All right. So let me see, we'll go through the question if there are some important questions. Oh, uh, again, Bart, like, you know, like software assign these default space numbers based on the scripts that they have provided. Like, you know, it's a detailed uh, uh, version. Like, you know, I mean, we can talk it later, but like, you know, it is how like script works. Okay. So uh, once I'm done with thermal zones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the space type properties to these geometries. Right now they're just geometry. I mean, for example, you don't know what kind of space is this? Is it a restroom or is it a conference room or what? So now I'm going to assign all those properties here using this uh, uh, another important tool here, which is set attributes for selected spaces. You can see if you select any space, you can assign properties like space types, Building story, construction set, thermal zones, um, ideal air loads, and thermostat. All right, so like I have one more question for you guys. Can you please explain me what is an ideal air load here? Like you know, any take a shot, it's fine. Nobody is going to judge you if you're wrong. So please take a shot. It's very important here. So meanwhile, you take a shot. I'll, I'll just like you know explain some more things. Uh, I'm waiting for your answers guys but like you know meanwhile like you know you can see something wrong happened here like you know uh, when I created those windows I did some mistake maybe I didn't click on the spaces properly and that's why these uh, subsurfaces are white in color it shouldn't be like this in uh, OpenStudio plugin that's how windows look like uh, this transparent blue 
that's how uh, walls look like orangish and that's how uh, roof look like so if you see these kind of like white patches or something something is wrong so i'm just going to fix it like you know just double click on spaces and try to delete them otherwise it won't allow you to run the energy model okay and i'm just going to fix it as well all right so again like you know it's very easy to fix the um, glitches or like errors in open studio again very important feature okay so like you know you can just use uh, your open studio tools uh, or like sketchup tools here and they'll fix things for you easily okay i'm just going to delete this space because it's creating some trouble here for me i know something is wrong with like these spaces but what i'm going to do i'm just going to delete them for now and just make things easier for us okay so i i'm just looking for some uh, feedback on idea layload so some people uh, replied and looks like most of them are right well in ideal a load there are three things uh, the efficiency is always 100 percent a lot of times you install boilers something like hey a condensing boiler is 92 percent efficient or maybe a simple boiler is 100 percent efficient a chiller with cop is six six is like more than 100 percent efficient so in ideal a load situation consider it as a district plan it is always 100 percent efficient it is always available uh, a lot of times like you can like switch off your boiler during months of like you know summers like something like from may to august it means the boiler is not available for heat but if you install an ideal a load in your spaces it means your uh, system is available always and third thing it is it has infinite capacity so three things when you install an ideal a load you have infinite capacity 100% uh, efficiency and it is always available so when i install the ideal a load in a space let's say i'm just going to like select some of these spaces there and uh, like select properties or install properties something like let's see it's this I'm going to assign properties like something like, hey, uh, let's say these are open offices. We already have construction set in our project just one, so we need not to worry about this. And then I'm going to assign the ideal A load status here and maybe provide a thermal thermostat, let's say for open office. These thermostat properties are based on SHA DOE reference buildings. So like, you know, they give you very generic properties based on DOE reference buildings. You can easily change them again whatever properties that we are providing here they're easily like you know switchable you can totally make the changes in them later so don't worry about them like you know i i can see some questions that hey like are these properties can you change them later yes you can totally that do that this software has uh, like you know amazing capabilities so like you know like options are always available okay so now i have installed the ideal a load status in these spaces now these spaces have infinite capacity for HVAC systems, heating and cooling, 100 uh, like always available and 100% efficiency. So why you need to install this ideal air load? Well, a lot of times you just need to do some like internal load calculation, the space load calculation, something what like people have done in like people used to do it in trace or like other tools. You need not to like go through those crazy MEP details to like bring all these space load calculations. You can just like install this ideal air load and it will bring you all the information something like space load and based on that you can like you know um, size your system the mp system and so many other things all right so that's the other benefit here and now i'm going to hit ok and for the sake like you know because we are we are limited on time i'm just going to install like you know same, same space type to each and every space for now ideal air loads and maybe just give it like a uh, thermostat as open office but like in uh, like in the real model you have to go through each and every space you can like select multiple space and provide the space types based on that there are different kind of space types as you know so like you know feel free to use all those options and at least explore them okay so now what i can do i can just like save this model and either i can move to open studio interface i'm just going to save it first like maybe on desktop i'm just going to create something real quick here 
save it some uh, maybe give a name let's um, I can give today's name uh, to this date here and save it now what if if you had some daylighting controls in your spaces you can totally install them I'm just going to do in one of these space like one of these space let's say for this I'm just going to hide the the roof here because it makes my life easier in case I need to drop the daylighting control you can see here on this uh, open studio toolbar there is a tool here new daylighting control well I just need to click it and drop it in the space uh, well, it, it, it actually went in like other space, but let me just change the properties for this daylighting control in Inspector 2. So like, you know, uh, it is, uh, it went in some other space. Uh, looks like the po position Z coordinate is in minus. I don't know why. So I'm just going to make it like plus and close it. So now it's here. Uh, you can bring it next to wall or like, you know, it depends like how your system is like designed. I'm just going to keep it like this. Just wanted to let you guys know that there are like so many additional features here in this Open Studio SketchUp interface. I'm just going to unhide everything so that my roof is still there and come out of my space. So you can see I have one like daylighting control here. Like I can change the properties easily for this daylighting control. You can rename this daylighting control if you want. This is my daylighting control here. You can change the coordinates, the position of the daylighting control, or you can change the properties. You want a continuous control type or some other kind of daylighting control. Um, there's so many properties. Please explore. Uh, we don't have uh, enough time for this, but yeah, definitely um, feel free to reach us back in case you have any questions. And one more thing that I want to explain here is uh, like how to implement some shading controls in your spaces. So like, you know, there are a couple of easier ways to do it. Like, you know, either I can just select all these spaces and use another script which reduces my workload significantly. The script is add overhangs by projection factor. Like let's say projection factor can be something like 0.3 of total height and hit OK. And you can see like, you know, I, I mean, I, I think I selected some spaces there, like some particular and that's where I got those shading uh, uh, controls or devices. Or I can do it manually. I can just like use Open Studio tools here, like, you know, create something. Um, and like you know install it over the windows i know i'm doing it really very fast here but like you know uh, you got the idea how to do it okay um, uh, let me just work on my so th there there are different ways to do it you can just use your sketch toolbar I, I like to use these scripts because it makes my life much easier you can see it took me maybe like milliseconds to create these shading geometries